Hello and welcome back to my studio. I'm Gina and in today's video I'm going to be moving on and building out the room next to the library. This is the place with the spiral staircase and with the numerous amount of books that I have started to create and still got a hell of a lot more to go. This is part of the project I'm building out an apothecary which is loosely based off the Outlander TV series and I think there's been a few projects um, that have been circling around which is fantastic. This is a little bit different, I'm putting in a mezzanine, I'm actually building through some of that metal work which is using that wooden fan to build out some sort of balustrades and all sorts of things to try and link the two rooms together so it's a little bit different but it's certainly got the same flavor that is coming through with all of the details that I'm hoping to get into it so this has been a fantastic project which I've absolutely thoroughly enjoyed and I'm really excited to bring it to you I was lucky enough to be able to spend uh, about a week on this uh, back to back normally I'm doing projects over a weekend so this was a fantastic one to get my teeth into and to create all of the amazing details that have come out of it so I'm going to split this video into two. So this is part one, which is building out all of the wall details, the mezzanine, and as well as a bit of a staircase as well. So hopefully you enjoy and uh, let's get started. So to begin with, I've just created these little cardboard models just so that I got an idea of the scale and the position of the build work so we're going to get into a little bit more of that in the next video but in this one we're just going to create all of the wall details and I'm starting with um, some mat board so I'm just going to cut out the doorways and just going to label those because I'm probably going to use those later to create the doors as well as the windows as well so just making sure that I've got all of those um, clearly labeled and set aside and now I'm just going to mix up um, a shade of green. So I've got lots of different greens as you can see, but I really wanted to mix it up and sort of mute it down a little bit. So just adding in some yellow and a bit of brown and then also just a little bit of white um, just to kind of give it more of that. I don't really know what it is. It's like a bottle green or a forest green. No, it's not as dark as a forest green. Anyway, it worked really well and it dried up a little bit darker as well once it's once I managed to get it all into place. I finished all of the top coat. I just went back over and just touched up areas that were showing through. I wasn't too worried about some of the um, areas coming through because I was going to age the project as well. So to create all of the details, all the panelling details, what I've done is I've used my Cricut and I've cut out all of these circles so I'm actually using the outer outer circles and then I'm just going to um, do exactly the same circle shape uh, but within gold so this is just gold paint over some paper that I've just painted pre beforehand and then cut it through on the Cricut and I'm just gluing these two together and the reason why I'm doing that is to so hopefully the black with the black underneath it will create a little bit of depth uh, in the panelling without it being too deep because I didn't really want it to be another layer of matte board because um, I felt that that would actually just be too thick so this is just a couple of layers of paper so it's reasonably thin but like I say with the black underneath the gold I'm just hoping that that will actually create the layer of um, detail that I'm looking for. So with that uh, two larger pieces that I'd glued together earlier, these are just going to cut, I'm going to cut these into strips which are going to create the longer, um, the horizontal and vertical lines of the panelling. So with the circles, the reason why I've done circles is so that I can actually cut that into quarters and I'm going to use those to create the corners. Um, that'll make a little bit more sense in just a little bit um, but it is a little bit of a tedious process and they're so teeny tiny um, but it actually creates a really great detail and I'm really pleased with how it's how it turns out so what I'm doing here I've actually marked out where all of the panels need to go on that on the green surface it's just really hard to see the pencil lines on the green um, but rest assured that they're all um, they're all marked out and what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of glue on the back of it and then put the circle of the arc facing into inside of the panel so instead of it being a rounded corner I want this the it to um, flip around the other way 
to create us to create the detail um, around each one of those panels. Then once I've got the corners in place, I can actually go ahead and um, put in the straight line. So I'm just measuring it up from the bottom just to make sure that it's square. Um, and just um, starting to create, starting to build out the, the panels. So this is um, a little bit of a tedious process. Um, I'm sure there's probably an easier way and I could potentially could have created Actually, I was thinking about it as actually creating them all on the Cricut and cutting them all out in one piece, but I wasn't too sure if I would was able to get the sizing right. And often with these projects, with all the best uh, intention, the sizing doesn't always turn out as you would expect. So this is just a little bit of a repetitive process. So it's just going um, around the project, putting in the corners, then putting in the horizontal and, and vertical lines of the panelling. Um, and that will actually create the details that I'm looking for. It's all starting to come together really well and now I'm going to move on to creating the skirting boards as well as the picture rail which I will be basically doing the same way. So I've just cut strips of mat board so I do want the um, added thickness into these these particular details so that's one of the things around the panelling details being a little bit thinner um, which allowed me to, to add a little bit more depth into the project which is great. So just one little strip down the bottom and then I'm going to glue another one into place just above it and that will create a little bit of um, detail into the skirting board without um, spending a lot of money. So I'm just basically creating it um, on the project. So I'm just going to create these two two layers, they're just going to be separated um, by a gap which will create a little bit of detail and then I'm going to cap it um, with another piece of matte board and just paint the edge um, in gold. And so with the um, picture rail it's basically the same, exactly the same process so I'm just using a strip of matte board and then I'll also cap it in exactly the same way as the skirting board as well. So here I'm just painting that very edge of the cap and then I'm going to go through and paint it all in the same green. So once that's all dried I can put the capping into place. So. I'm wanting to make sure that that gold edge is facing out of the project and that's just going to add another layer of detail into this panelling. So here you can kind of see that very edge of the, um, of the 
girding board or the capping and then I'm going to do exactly the same on the picture rail as well. And then this is very much a rinse and repeat type of um, exercise so you can see here I've got a couple of um, panels already created and then the back panels and the other panels are all this created in the same way. Moving on to creating the stairs. So the stairs are actually going to be hidden. We're not really going to be able to see them. So I've just created a bit of a template uh, on a bit of copy paper and I'm just transferring that over onto the mat board and then I'll cut that out. I'll cut two sides of that out to create the stairs. <laughs> Once I've got all the pieces cut out, so I've got my risers um, sitting there as well, I can actually start gluing the whole piece together. To create the mezzanine I have cut out the actual floor area using uh, two layers of foam board. So um, this is just going to create a little bit more depth and then I'm just using popsicle sticks to create the flooring. So this is exactly the same process that I did for the library um, which I'll put a link in the description below if you're wanting to check that one out as well and then I'm actually going to do the same on the floor inside the apothecary room and then I'll actually end up by aging it all up or painting it all out and aging it up once it's, once both floors are actually done. To create the crown moulding I'm actually creating this myself as well and just using a mat board and as well as a, a very small or thin wooden dowel. It's about three millimetres um, diameter um, of the wooden dowel. So I'm actually just creating um, some details in it just using a couple of strips of mat board and then I'm basically repeating the process with slightly smaller pieces of mat board just so gluing them together on at right angles and then once those two are also glued together I'm actually going to layer them on top of each other so this is actually going to create a bit of a step detail um, within the within the crown molding and then once those two are also glued into place then it's just as simple as laying the round um, dowel, the little tiny dowel, right down through the middle and then that actually creates a really nice little crown moulding detail without, um, without spending too much money on it which is great. So when I'm painting this up I'm wanting to uh, have a little bit more shading, a little bit more colours and um, sort of things coming through rather than a flat sort of gold, although gold isn't flat it's quite shiny. So I'm just going to put a base coat of the yellow down and then I'm going to add in little bits of a deeper gold just here and there and then I'm also going to go back over and just add in some highlights of a sort of a rusty red colour as well. Once this is all painted over with the gold, it's just going to show through some highlights really of some of those colours coming through underneath without it just being all one flat colour. So I was pretty happy with how this had turned out 
um, and then once it's in the project it looks pretty good. Moving on to creating the architrace around the windows. So this is, um, again, I've just used a couple of layers of matte board to create the architrace, painted it in, in green, and then I've just dry brushed it with some gold over the top just to add a little bit more texture into the architrace. So once I'm happy with them and I've cut them with my miter shears, I'm just going to glue those into place. And there it is, it's all coming together quite nicely. So we've got all the all the panelling done and now we're going to move on to painting the floor. So what I've done here is I've just mixed up a basically a wash. So I'm trying to create a bit of a stain out of just some acrylic paint and water. And I've just, once I've kind of put through the first layer, I'm just going to go back over and layer it up with even more layers of paint. So it's a mixture of black as well as some... Um, brown paint as well and then I also go over with just some straight brown um, wash as well just to kind of try and warm up the floor but I'm trying to match it very much to the library next door which you can kind of just see off to the left there. <laughs> So now moving on to creating some of the balustrades and this is a fan that I've actually bought that is already black which is fantastic, it's one step I don't have to do and um, I'm just going to basically tape it down to my mat board just so that things don't move around and it just made, thing, made life a lot easier. So once I'd kind of um, placed them all out and I was pretty happy with um, the placement of everything, I just used some bamboo skewers at the top and the bottom rail, so that's going to add quite a bit of structure. And then I've just added some um, toothpicks, no, they're not toothpicks, they're matchsticks, um, just to add uh, a little bit more structure into the, um, into the sides of it as well. And here I'm actually placing out some of the feet because um, I wanted to raise it up off the uh, off the mezzanine. Uh, I placed them out and then I changed my mind. So <laughs> it's often the way uh, it's sort of working out how things go um, in the project. And then I'm just following exactly the same pr process that I've done in the other in the library build as well. So I'm just coating both the front and the back of the fan with some. Um, it's actually wood glue and just they're going to allow that to dry before I move on to painting it. So as it was already black, all I've done is gone through and painted the wooden part, so the skewers and the matchsticks in black as well, and then I'm just going over with a quite a liberal coat of silver, and then layering it up with a bronze metallic paint, just um, basically dry brushing it, and then I also go back over with a gold, and that actually picks up the gold that we've got in the room, in the panelling, um, as well as the um, skirting boards and the picture rail. So it actually just tries to tie it all together, which works out really well.
So now this is the stairs, so this, this is all put together and just with a little bit of paint on it. And I just wanted to share this with you. This was the return that I had created um, out of the mat board as well. But as I was trying to put it, fitting it into the, dry fitting it into the project, I needed to cut out this piece and I was like, that's not going to work. So I actually went back and I've created this uh, version of it instead and used the same metal and that way I can kind of play around with it and it's got a little bit more room to give and I can kind of slide that backwards and forwards just to know that it will fit into the project nice and snugly um, without it causing too many issues. So now I can start putting um, this part of the project together so I'm just uh, gluing that the stairs in as well as putting the return piece um, at the bottom. So this was a bit of a leftover from the stairs so I thought what a great opportunity to use that into this project which again helps tie it all together. And then I've just gone ahead and finished off the skirting board and picture rail as it returns round that corner. Um, and then that was a little bit of a struggle trying to get that into place but yeah that's looking pretty good. And then now I can start to build, put in the mezzanine. So this is now also painted up um, in the same way that I've done the floor into the main apothecary. And so I've just put a bit of glue into place and got my little trusty level out. It's looking pretty good that way. Oh, a little bit off that way. I managed to get it level in the end, which was great. And now I'm going to move on and put in the uh, crown moulding which is the ones that we've created before just out of some matte board and the very thin wooden dowel which is great and now that's all painted up and dried and I'm just going to this is going to help actually keep the uh, mezzanine in place as well so not just relying on the glue around the very edges um, and once this is actually dried it's actually pretty pretty strong <music> So now that's all in place we can move on to installing the balustrades. So this is a little return that I've also created at the same time as the main one here and once that's all put into place we're pretty much all done for this particular video. So there we go that's the end of part one of a two-part story and I really hope that you've enjoyed this video just as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. Just before we go through to the final reveal, uh, for this part anyway, I just wanted to say thank you very much to all of my subscribers. I can see that the channel is starting to grow which I'm absolutely stoked about and I'm really grateful for all of the support that you're actually giving me so thank you very much. And I've also included a couple of videos that I think that you might like if you're wanting to see what else I've been up to. Um, and don't forget to hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing to my channel as well. So without further ado, here's the final reveal.